What's up everybody, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna to look at this futuristic looking machine called the Decent Espresso Machine. And no, that is not a joke, that's what it's called. So some have referred to this, and when I say some, I mean me, as the Tesla of espresso machines. And, and I'm not just saying that like a lot of people say that about everything. Oh, this is the Tesla of this world. But genuinely, this not only has a screen similar to the Tesla, but the business model is similar to Tesla. And the, the machine itself is constantly updated year after year because a lot of it is based in the software on this Android tablet. So you buy something, and as you continue throughout the years, it's going to upgrade. Unlike other espresso machines where you buy it, and that's what you have unless you modify it. This, you just update year after year. So it has a similar approach as Tesla, which I think is really unique. And in fact, their motto even, as I was talking to John Buckman the other day, the CEO of, of uh, Decent, is our goal is to make technology essentially so great and progress that it eventually disappears, which kind of comes from that Apple motto, right? So their idea is each year they're working on this technology, they're trying to harness that until it becomes to the point where the difficult stuff just kind of disappears, right? So instead of having a typical espresso machine where you buy it and that's what you have, this one goes through software updates every so often that's built into the tablet. You just click the software update and it gives you something new and different so you have a constantly evolving espresso machine. Now, let's to get to get up to this. I'm going to just briefly walk through espresso history. So back in you know the uh, it was either late 1800s, early 1900s. You had kind of the first uh, espresso machine, uh, and I talk more about history in that flare uh, espresso machine video. But you have essentially the first one made that pulled espresso, quote unquote, at around one to two bars, so around one and a half bars of pressure. And then as you kept going in history, you eventually get to where Gaja creates the first nine bar lever machine. And then you get to um, espresso machines that are pulling nine bars. Now, over the years, coffee itself, the actual coffee beans have changed completely. You have more advanced uh, uh, agricultural techniques and how to grow and cultivate the coffee plant. You have more advanced processing techniques from these producers and these people partnering with producers to create these advanced techniques in order to maybe uh, use less water to be more sustainable, but also to bring out really intriguing flavors that had never really been in coffee before, just based off of how they're controlling the fermentation process. You have different styles of roasting all around the world from the maintaining of French and Italian really dark roasted coffee that goes to second crack and beyond. And you have really extraordinary light roasted coffee, like from Scandinavian countries, which is referred to sometimes as the Nordic roast style. So you have all these different coffees, all these different origins, all these different processing methods, and all of these different roast profiles. So I don't think that a straight nine bar espresso machine is going to give its due to all these, all these coffee beans. You're not going to be able to truly dial all of them in to their perfect, or to that, that, uh, that ideal like, uh, god shot, right? So to kind of answer that question, you know, Slayer kind of really popularized the flow profiling mechanism, right? So lever machines for forever have been pressure profiling, but Slayer, you know, really made that needle valve control over the flow really popular back in around 2012, 2013. I could be off on those dates, but the point is there that it really became popularized there. People for so long were pulling 20 to 30 second shots, and then Slayer comes out with this, this, this control on the paddle on the group head where you're able to control that flow rate. And there was a continuation of this control over coffee because people were finding out that different roast profiles were in different coffees, different varieties, different elevations grown, et cetera, et cetera. They were all giving different puck integrities. Dark roasted coffees have a really high puck integrity. So you can blast it with nine bars of pressure and it's going to do a really good job. But lightly roasted coffees don't have nearly as high of a puck integrity. So you've got to do a little finessing around it. And there we have, and thus we have, thus, thusly we have these new flow profiling systems. Now the Decent is the answer I think to all of this because it's the first real machine, and to my knowledge, that you can dynamically change flow, pressure, and temperature, all three throughout the duration of a shot, which is mind boggling. This can really help to lessen channels. This can help to uh, um, 
pull a more even extraction on something that has lesser in puck integrity. You can do a slow ramp and you can even stop at six bars instead of nine if there's a coffee that's dainty enough, right? So you're able to control a lot more of these processes throughout. So yeah, you have a lot of these different controllable variables on the machine. Flow, as I talk about in my uh, The Truth About Espresso, which is a video linked right here, in that video, we looked at what water depth it was and what flow prof profiling really, really actually was doing. And how pressure, for the most part, is kind of a red herring, but it is, it is more so the ceiling as opposed to really dictating anything. So for instance, even on a lever machine where you are pressure profiling, you're still technically flow profiling, but it's more direct access to pressure, right? Because you need flow press, uh, times resistance in order to get pressure. So if you took out the resistance and you pushed, you're controlling the flow. There is no pressure because there's no resistance. So on lever machines, you have more direct access to pressure because you're pushing. But if we were to remove the resistance, there's no pressure. You're still controlling the flow to an extent, but you have more direct and applicable access to pressure. So in this, you're able to set the ceiling, the pressure. You can set the flow. So you can set what you want the water debit to be. And you can set what you want that input flow to be. And just to be clear, no machine is able to tell you exactly what the input flow is. And again, if you don't know that term, you don't know water debit, I, I urge you to go watch that other video I referenced earlier and put above, uh, and I'll have it in the caption below as well, but about all these, different all these different terms I'm using. It's very important in order to follow what I'm discussing here. But this machine allows you to set that ceiling with pressure. It allows you to set that input flow with a five to 20% bias. There's, there's error in it because it's based off of an algorithm, right? Uh, there's no real way yet to know exactly the input flow at every given second, but it is very accurate at high pressure shot with low flow, and it's not as accurate when it's low pressure with a high flow, so like a turbo shot, which, boom, I linked that. I have a video on turbo shots as well. Been doing a lot of videos lately. So you have this capability of really understanding the input flow at the higher pressure shots, and it's a little bit more rough, closer to that 20% margin of error when it's something like a turbo shot. But even still, you're able to control that flow. You control the debit, you control roughly where you want the flow to be stopping at based off the algorithms in place. And finally, you have that control over temperature. So you can start your shot at a certain degree and you can end it at a separate degree. And the, the sensors in this and, and the way that the water is heated is so complex, it's really cool. So the way that water is heated in this machine is there is a two meter long coil of steel coiled up. And what happens is the water goes through it and it expands its surface area an incredible amount. Think about that, two meters. That's it's about that long, right? I'm about, my wingspan is a bit over two meters. So, you know, about like that. That's been coiled up to fit inside this machine. Water goes through it, heats really quickly. So you don't have to wait long when you're pulling espresso in the morning. Heats up extraordinarily fast. Three, four, five minutes. Haven't timed it, but it's fast. You can get it going, have your coffee and pup prepared, and it's ready to go super fast. And then it also has sensors in the group so that it can tell the boiler, or not the boiler, there isn't a boiler in this, so I misspoke, but it can tell how hot you need it to go. So it can, it can make small changes to the temperature, okay? So it has sensors in that group, so it tells you what it's at, at the puck essentially, so that you're able to have a more reliable temperature. Now, typically, espresso machines tell you the temperature at the boiler. That's not very helpful though, because it goes from the boiler where it may be 205 degrees or it may be 96 degrees Celsius, and it's gonna go through the machine and out the group, and it loses a lot of heat in that traveling. This one, it's gonna be a lot higher temperature at the group if you set your machine to 96, because it's gonna be closer to 96 at the portafilter than a typical espresso machine that reads it in the boiler. So, that was a lot. You have those three variables, which is an incredible thing to have in such a small espresso machine at home. Now, elephant in the room. The tablet, Vanna White, right? The tablet is an incredibly sophisticated addition to this machine that gives you precise control over everything. Now you can manually, by moving this around, change flow or pressure. And there's a video that uh, I'll put in the caption below where John Buckman shows how you can do that. Um, but you have the ability to go to all these different presets on the machine. So you go to presets, and right here I have, um, just to name a few of these, you have what's referred to as the best overall pressure profile, Blooming Espresso, which Scott Rayo made famous. It's essentially, you start your shot out at four milliliters per second, and then you t cut it off after 20 or 30 seconds, cut it completely off, and you're letting that puck expand and bloom, letting off the gases and fully saturating all those grounds. And you kick the flow rate back up to two milliliters or grams per second, um, 
well, two milliliters would be more accurate, I guess. But um, you, you're cranking it back up to about two and you're letting it ride out to around a minute or so. So you have all these different profiles that you can dial your bean into. Some beans taste better at a um, at the default setting, which the default is, um, it's a slow ramp up to about uh, four, four bars of pressure, then it goes, back, goes straight up to nine. So there are all these different profiles that you can put on different beans and they're each gonna tell a different story in the cup. Which is really, which is really interesting. And wow, I have been on a cheesy kick. Tell a different story in the cup. Yikes! I apologize for the cheese fest here. Um, so yes, you have all that capability. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet that you can also do on this machine is you can replace the portafilter with what's called a T portafilter. Now, I don't have one yet. Keyword is yet. Uh, but you can put T in there, and you can profile a certain temperature and flow sprinkle rate over the T. And you can extract tea on here. You can also do the same with pour overs. There's an alternate basket you can put in that, that spreads out the water and sprays and can give you incredible pour overs. And you can dial in the pulses that you want at their flow rate and at a certain temperature. It's absolutely mind boggling the amount of things this can do. Another incredible thing about this tablet is you're able to graph your shots real time. So you have these, you have for instance, as you see in that side camera somewhat, um, I couldn't figure out how to screen record because your boy doesn't know technology at all. So we're just filming this. But you see on here the graph. But you might not have your grind setting perfect to where it can't match the graph. If you remember from that water profiling video I put up, if you don't have the grind size proper, you can't match certain pressures. It just doesn't happen because pressure is flow times resistance. So you have to have a certain resistance for the flow to match in order to equal a certain pressure. So you've got to dial in your coffee grind size perfectly. So this brings in another variable that people aren't paying as much attention to in just straight nine bar shots, right? So it shows you all this, but it also will show you the graph in real time. So if, for instance, your course is too coarse, your course, come on, baby, get with the picture, get with the flow. Uh, if your grind setting is too coarse, it's not going to hit the pressure you want, and you'll see that. On this one, it's supposed to go up to nine bars. You'll see in lifetime that the pressure line isn't hitting nine bars, and then you know you need to go finer, right? So it gives you real feedback in real feedback. It gives you feedback in real time, all right, which is an incredible, incredible uh, um, uh, advantage to this machine. Now, I've already talked to you about the heat sensors. They have it's incredibly complicated, uh, all the algorithms and the, and the placement of the sensors in the machine, so I'm not going to get too deep since this is supposed to be an introductory video. I know I've, I've dove in deep, so please ask questions in the comments below. But I just wanted to hit some of that before we get to this um, kind of conclusion about the machine. Then we'll go over uh, kind of who the, who the machine is for, who it's not for, etc. So I believe that this kind of setup is truly the future of espresso of espresso machines, right? As shops, as there are more and more multi-roasters, as there are more and more variants in shops and in roastings preferences, all these shops, they just can't pull nine bar pressure shots anymore because coffee isn't, oh, kitty cat. Uh, the coffee isn't very uh, uh, replicable with those, with those nine bar shots. They don't taste very good, especially with lower puck integrity. So I think as we go forward in the future and as this technology becomes more and more tightened together, and it becomes more and more, I guess, understood. And as it becomes more and more magic, more machines are going to be taking this into consideration. And I think five, 10 years, you're going to see stuff like this in a lot of cafes, which is going to be incredible. And hopefully in the future, we won't be drinking any bad espresso at cafes, which sadly is a very typical experience for me. It's poor espresso. So I'm really excited about the future of espresso machines. And I think that this is marking something quite fantastic. Now, there are downsides to this. Being, being run off of a computer, it can be pretty buggy. There are some things that can get kind of annoying. Um, I, I actually had issues turning it on before turning this on because there's a switch here that's a little counterintuitive, uh, for an AC switch that you need to have out and not in to turn it on. And I had it in and not out and it wouldn't turn on. And then I had to turn it off and on and off. And so there are some buggy things that are being worked through, but all minor inconveniences. So who is this machine for? I think this machine could be for anyone who's interested in Nespresso, but as of now, I don't think it really is. And the reason is because we're still in that technology phase where we're figuring out what is best. So 
the decent community as a whole is massive. It's sprawling. There are three different discussion boards that are recognized by decent, uh, where people are constantly sharing recipes and talking about espresso theory. And it's a really fun research area. Research and development is just constant right now. So the technology is still building and there are new updates coming out all the time. And we're not there yet to where I think everyone would want this machine because right now there's still a lot of thought you have to put into it. It's not really just a lock in and click a button. You can make it that way, but you wouldn't be using everything. So as time goes on and as more and more things are implemented into this machine, I think it's gonna be casting a much wider net and a lot more people will be interested. But right now, as I said, we're not at that magic phase yet. We're not to the point where you where it just happens. You put in your, your coffee, you get to pop, 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 and you're pulling it perfectly for that coffee. I do think that is gonna happen where you won't even really need to dial in very much and there's already steps towards that. Uh, my friend Jonathan Gagne has created these adaptive style shots that pull good espresso without dialing it in very well. And, and those are built into the machine as well that you can, you can pull out, right? So you have all these machines that people are contributing, all these profiles, I should say, people are contributing that you can replicate on your own machine by simply clicking on it and going. So this machine has just a lot of potential. I'm extraordinarily excited about it. So the decent community is actually quite robust. You have all these different forums where people chat and they swap recipes. You can literally create your own recipe, upload it, and if someone else has the same bean or if they have a similar bean, you can share it with them. They can put it onto their tablet and they can recreate what you've done at home. It's really, it's really an incredible thing and there's just constantly new ideas, sharing of new ideas and pushing the boundaries of espresso further and further. I've learned so much in just a couple of months I've been in the community that it's kind of mind boggling. All right, so enough talk, let's go ahead and pull a shot. I'm gonna do the blooming espresso profile that Scott Rayo made famous a few years back, kind of turned the coffee world on its head. But that is one of the great things about this machine is it introduced a lot of alternative styles of preparing espresso, like the Alange, which had never really been discussed, or blooming profiles. So we're gonna look at a blooming shot right now. Hopefully it pulls pretty well. Um, but yeah, let's go and check it out. So I'm gonna go ahead ready, and here we go. So we're gonna pay attention to the lines here, if, if we can see them on that screen. So machine is uh, ensuring that we have the right temperature, which we wanted at 97.5 Celsius, and we have it at the puck at about 90, well, it was at 97, it dropped immediately, obviously, as it hit the cooler coffee. We have the flow rate starting at four milliliters per second. It's saturating the puck. And you see the temperature dipped immediately because it went to the cooler coffee and the cooler uh, porta filter, and then it rose back up to where our ideal is. I can't move the cup now because it would skew the scale, so I'm just gonna have some drippy drippies. Um, kind of need to move the scale. I need to move this though. How can we move that without messing the scale up? All right, there we go. So we're having the blooming period now, so it's just allowing the, those, those grounds to be fully saturated, and then after this, it's gonna ramp up to two milliliters per second to finish the shot. So these typically give you a, a mid mid 20% um, ex ex extraction yield, which is kind of incredible. And this works really well with lightly roasted coffees. You just have to have a grinder that can grind fine enough. Because of that blooming phase at the beginning, you have to be really fine because it becomes really easy for that water to pass through after it's been resting for that long. So we have it going. The shot stopped at 52 grams. So we did the four milliliters per second turned off had about a 30 second phase of blooming, 20, 20 second phase, I can't tell how long that is, 30 second phase of blooming. And then it went back up to two milliliters per second until we hit our target, which I did uh, 18 grams in, 51.9 grams out. So there we have our blooming espresso. So these should be a, a much sweeter type of shot with some really nice acidity, uh, which is you know ideally what we're getting when we pull espresso regardless. Let me wipe off these little stripes. These racing stripes are kind of sick. No. Those are kind of sick. Now it looks like looks like a vampire bit it and it's like espresso blood running down its neck. That's pretty I'm like Edward Cullen. <laughs> Team Edward. Uh Twilight. Stephanie Myers. Uh sick. So I'm gonna I don't have a spoon. I'm gonna get a spoon. Cause Daddy Hoff says to stir, not swirl. I'm getting my servant to give me one. No, I'm kidding, my cameraman who's my boss. He gave me evil eyes for saying that. All right, so I'm gonna stir. I'm gonna give this a sip. Put that there. Oh, a little shameless plug. Umeko spoons, umeshiso. All heads have skulls. Onyx Coffee Lab. Sick spoons. All right. 
really sweet and citrusy aroma, which isn't surprising considering I forgot this was the Kenya Kamwangi. And that's a big dominant note of citrus. It's a little tart, which I think means I could push the extraction more, meaning I could go a little finer on the, uh, on the grind set setting. But it is still an enjoyable shot and not one that I would get rid of by any means. So I'm gonna enjoy this as we finish up this video. A big misconception is, is that this machine can do everything, right? There's not really a machine yet that can do everything. Now, a machine that can do more than most? Absolutely. This is also, I just think, the, a, a coffee nerd's dream. It is so much fun, especially right now since not everything is figured out. And I doubt any, everything will be figured out at any time soon. But we're now, we're still in this trial phase where people are experimenting and finding new things where they're putting pressure at the end of a shot instead of at the beginning saying that it enhances aromatics. Now, I've not tested this, but I have some friends I highly respect who have been saying that. And then you have these shots that are pulling at, you know, four bar the whole time. You have shots that are pulling at four milliliters a second the whole time. You have shots that are going up and down and up and down. You have the capability of seeing puck resistance on this graph, which right now, um, let's see if we can pull it up. Yes, right now you can see it with these yellow lines, right? So the, the puck resistance is simply a, a, a formula that they have tagged in there that is um, um, pressure divided by flow. Uh, technically it should be, you know, pressure divided by flow squared, but they found that the differences between those graphs, even though they should be a lot bigger than they are, aren't really big enough to notice a difference. So they put the more simplistic equation of flow, uh, by, uh, pressure divided by flow. And so you're able to see how the puck is breaking down, which can really help you also figure out the, the best profile for your specific espresso, your choice. So this machine is great for people who enjoy dark roasts, medium roasts, light roasts, and all in between, as opposed to a nine bar machine, which you need something with a high puck integrity. I have more video ideas coming forward with this, but I wanted to get people's feet wet who had never seen this machine before. So now you know, this is what I think the future of espresso machines will undoubtedly be. Uh, people who love lever style shots, they have, you can program a lever style shot in here. Uh, people who enjoy uh, different st style shots like a Slayer style, you can do a Slayer style shot in here. The idea is this is the movement going forward. I'm very excited about the future with Decent Espresso and with machines in general that are able to control temperature, flow, and pressure all dynamically during that process where you can set it and forget it or you can change throughout. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Again, I'm gonna make the plea to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Uh, check out some of the other videos that I put links up, uh, uh, links about. I have a lot of nice videos that are all these more long form, so if you enjoy long form videos, uh, have fun with a lot of the content I've put out. Uh, if you didn't like it, you know, please let me know below. I'm always willing to try and do things to reach a broader audience. My goal, the reason I started this channel is to make specialty coffee more accessible. So I'm wanting to break down convoluted topics like water debit and flow profiling and turbo shots. I'm wanting to take these topics, put them in layman's terms. So please let me know if there's something I could be doing to make that easier. Thank you very much again. I love making these videos for you. I'm going to finish up this uh, slightly tart but still delicious Kenya Kamwangi AA, and I hope you all have a delicious brew today. There's actually a banana in that as well. Awesome. Cool, cool. Remember the code word, which is in this video. If you skip to the end trying to cheat, it's not here. It's a little earlier, maybe a lot earlier. I don't know. Watch the video. Cheers and goodbye.